This episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Cozy Comforts. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Beth and Katie to tell us about their recipes. So, Beth, tell us about what you made. Okie dokie. Um, when I thought of Cozy Comforts, you know, I just, there were so many ways you could go with that. So, but I, I I saw this recipe on Facebook that just, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it's pretty simple. It's something I've done similar stuff to. It's where you bake boars and cheese with tomatoes, grape tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes um, for a little bit till the cheese melts. You add uh, your pasta. I think we had penne. And one, so like 20 minutes with the borzen. And now let me just go back to borzen is expensive. I love that stuff though. The, it's more affordable if you can get a trio of it. They were, they had it over the holidays at, at Costco. But um, I, I bought one, learned that I actually needed two for the recipe, went to Aldi looking for something similar. And I just got a little thing of goat cheese still were slapped still was very good you couldn't tell um but anyway so i had boars in and a little goat cheese but i would recommend using two uh once that is all melty you add your cooked pasta throw some spinach on there uh to let it wilt and serve it up and it was so good and it was toddler approved and um because I I wanted something to make uh, when the, the kids were coming over uh also very good for leftovers and yeah it's it's a good one you could you could add a protein to it if you want but so yummy so yeah that was it it was borsen baked borsen cheese borsen borsen I, I've seen that recipe online as well and it always looks super easy and delicious and it comes out looking so creamy and you just spoon it into a bowl and I've been meaning to do it myself so yeah I'm glad you can can vouch for it yeah totally yummy yummy I I will make it again but again the the board I wish there was an alternative to that and there probably are ways to play with it but but it's so easy with that you just open it and boom well, I was going to say, I have seen a variation of this recipe before, but it uses feta cheese. Yes. So yeah. that's a possibility. Yes. But the one thing that you mentioned that I haven't seen people do is add spinach to it. And that seems like it would just add like a ton of like that nice greens flavor and also like make it look pretty. So I thought that was really neat. Good yeah. Addition. Yeah. I like that too. I, I, um, it was just a good you know, it makes it healthier and, and it was really yummy. So yeah. So Katie, what was your cozy comfort recipe? All right. Well, um, my recipe is for loaded twice baked sweet potatoes and it is from the website, allrecipes.com by John Misovich. Um, I know I've talked about twice baked sweet potato or twice baked potatoes before on this show. It's one of the first things that I learned how to make as a teenager. So it's definitely a comfort food for me, but I don't think that I'd ever done twice baked sweet potatoes before coming across this recipe. And I've actually been making this quite a bit recently. I really like it. So um happy to share it with you. You just Preheat your oven and then you put your sweet potatoes on a baking sheet. You want to prick them all over um, and then you drizzle them with olive oil and rub to make sure you coat them completely. Um, here, I it doesn't call for it, but I always salt my potato skins. I think it makes them tastier. So I put some kosher salt on the outside as well. And then you bake them until they're cooked through about 35 minutes. 
you do want to make sure that you stab them to make sure that they're cooked all the way through because you're going to be scooping them out. So you want them to be like completely done. Uh, but while those are cooking in a pan on your stove, you cook up some diced bacon. Once that's all nice and crispy, then you add in some diced jalapeno and some green onion. Um, and then you just cook that for a minute and remove it from the heat and set it aside. Once your sweet potatoes are done and cooled a little bit, safe to handle, you slice the top off, scoop the insides out. I like using a grapefruit spoon for this because it's got the serrated edges. It's just a really nice tool for scooping out potato insides. Um, once you've got the flesh out and into a bowl, then you mix that with salt, pepper, cayenne, um, some cheddar cheese, and uh, lime juice, which I thought was a really nice addition, unexpected but tasty addition to this. And then it calls for creme fraiche, but I have been using Greek yogurt and it works great. It's perfect. Um, you add your bacon mixture with your jalapenos and your onions and stir that all together. And then you put that whole, like the whole mixture back into your sweet potato skin shells. And then you put more um, cheddar cheese on top of that and just bake it for like 20 minutes. Um, I have been making two of these at a time, like when I've got some extra time on the weekends and then just having one for lunch and then saving one. And it reheats awesome to like have it during the week for lunch. And um, it's just like super tasty and warm and cozy, comforting for me. So I have loved this and will definitely be making this, you know, in the future a lot probably. <laughs> Sounds so good. Yeah, yeah it really does. Like basically just a, a little complete meal, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. What kind of potatoes do you like to use when you're sweet potato? Any particular type? Whatever okay. is at Meyer. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, does the filling, what does the Greek yogurt do? Just add flavor? Like how does that affect the filling, would you say? I think it it's like more of a binder yeah right so it holds everything together and just kind of makes it stick so when you slice through the potato you know it doesn't all fall out just kind of sticks sure. yeah yum yes all right I'll have to tell us about your cozy comfort yeah so I similar to Beth I had a lot of different ideas but I kept returning to soup um and I subscribed to a few different like cooking newsletters so um, recently I got one that included a recipe for, um, uh, hold on. I want to say exactly what they call it. Squash soup with lentils and herbs. Um, so basically this was so easy. It took about an hour total and involved fairly minimal amount of chopping stuff. So I really like that. This was a good weeknight soup. So basically you put four tablespoons of olive oil in a soup pot. You throw in a chopped a large yellow onion, season with salt and pepper, and just stir um, for eight to 10 minutes until the onions kind of get a little bit of color. And then you turn the heat down to medium, add some cumin and crushed red pepper flakes, if you don't mind spice, and just kind of let those spices bloom a bit for like 90 seconds. And then you add in a peeled, chopped um, squash. So it said you could use acorn or kabocha or butternut. I used butternut because that's what I had and um, four cloves of sliced or chopped garlic. And then you just kind of stir that every so often for 15 to 20 minutes until the squash starts to kind of fall apart. You do have to cut the squash fairly small. It said like half inch to one inch pieces. So the, just a note there. Then you throw in one and a half cups of red lentils and eight cups of either water mixed with better than bouillon or eight cups of broth. And then basically you just let it simmer for about half an hour and it kind of turns into like a split pea soup like texture. Um, I ended up letting it go a little further because I wanted it a little bit like thicker. But um, an another thing I thought you could do is you could use your an immersion blender and kind of puree it a little. I didn't feel the need to, but if you wanted to, like, you know, and even the recipe says like the texture is your choice. So anyway. And then basically you top it when you're done. This was kind of cool. You're supposed to do a drizzle of um, sherry vinegar or white wine vinegar, and then throw some coarsely chopped herbs on top. So 
I used um, chives and cilantro. And then it said, if you wanted to, you could add a dollop of, uh, again, creme fraiche or Greek yogurt. And I added Greek yogurt. And then you're kind of supposed to like mix this all up. So the herbs like wilt a little bit in the hot soup and the yogurt gets mixed in and the vinegar. And it was really delicious. I have a photo here of what it looks like. And um, I liked the amount it made too. Um, it was like the perfect amount for two people to have like a couple bowls for a hearty dinner and then like leftover for like one more day. So I like that because I feel sometimes like when I make soup, it's just so much. And then I'm like trying to freeze it. And like, I don't know, I, it was like a exact right amount of soup. I was happy about that. Um, it was really good. It was really easy. Um, you could certainly mess around with it by adding other stuff, but I thought it was nice. And it was like, the cumin and the red pepper flakes add that little bit of heat that I thought really like made it kind of cozy and comforting. Um, so super good, definitely on the list to make again. And I'd recommend, recommend it. That sounds so good. And yeah, I'm like yeah. super impressed by how easy it sounds to make, because if you had been like squash and lentil soup to me, I'd be like, uh, uh, too complicated. <laughs> like, not doing it, but it does sound really easy and delicious, especially with the spice and the herbs. And yeah, I'm going to make that. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like the perfect kind of soup to put on when, on a winter day like we're having right now. Um, yeah. So, and did you cut your squash or did you buy it? You, I you cut it. it. Okay. And it, but it was fine. Like, again, the only things you have to cut or like chop the onion, chop the squash, I guess the garlic, but that was super easy. And then the herbs, but like, it really, it's like, I feel like often with soup, there's so many veggies to chop. It really, yeah. Would, yeah, yeah it's it not like minutes of work, but, you know, you could, you could buy it already. You totally could not, to make it really easy. Yeah. And just and throw cut it. it some more. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Absolutely. that, yeah, it sounds really yummy. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it was good. I would recommend. So, all right. Well, thanks to you both also for sharing your delicious cozy comforts. And I want to say thank you to our audience for watching Recipe Share. And be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about. And do feel free to share your own in the comments. Uh, feel free to join us next time for Recipe Share when we our theme is dressing up. We'll be making some dressing recipes. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing.